Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, An Introduction to Spark Systems Tools and Techniques for Babel Guide Version 3. My name is Deb Oliver, and on behalf of IIBA, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. You know, IIBA is all about uniting a community of professionals to create better business outcomes. And what better way to do that than have all all of us here to hear more about some tools and resources that can help us continually find ways of improving our practice and our organization's results. And today, we have Spark Systems with us to help us do just that. In 2015, IIBA formed a strategic alliance with Spark Systems that follows our guiding principles for creating more collaboration, engagement, and value to our community specifically to support BA professionals in advancing their careers and, achieve, and achieving greater effectiveness in business analysis work. And now, Spark Systems and IIBA have announced the public beta release of a reference model for IIBA's business analysis body of knowledge. So really, what it is, is the ultimate toolkit for business analysis practitioners. It references Babbock Guide version 3, it's focused on the tools and techniques for the Babbock Guide, and it's housed within Spark's Enterprise Architect system. So to uh, start the, our discussion today and to get you more fully acquainted with the system, I'm very pleased to introduce our facilitator and presenter for today's webinar. Let's start with Coop Cooper-Smith, our facilitator. We are always pleased to have Coop join us. Coop has over two decades of experience in software systems development. He is an enthusiastic advocate of the BA profession and shares his enthusiasm and leadership in mentoring business analysis professionals. Not only is Coop a well-recognized speaker within the BA community, but he is also president of B2T Training. Our presenter today is Scott Hebbard. He is a communications manager at Spark Systems. Scott has over 20 years' experience in information communications technology. His reach spans work in universities, software companies, telecommunications, and the state government. Scott is an educator, and we are pleased to have him guide us through this joint collaborative iteration of Enterprise Architects. I will now turn the webinar over to our facilitator, Coop Cooper-Smith. Thank you so much, Deb, and a great introduction. Um, I always love listening to people introduce me and all the, the cool things they say. So I am uh, thrilled to be here today. Um, we have Scott, who's going to do most of the talking um, and just the, the collaboration. I'm all about collaboration, so the collaboration between the IIBA and Spark Systems, I think, is, is just awesome. Um, one of the reasons why it's awesome is because in today's world, we all need to, you know, you've heard the, the saying, faster, better, cheaper. Um, I don't know if we actually accomplish that, but we can be faster. We can be more productive. Uh, we could, with technology, we can push off some stuff that yeah, we don't need to, to redo, right? Technology is there already. Technology is a little scary uh, with the implementation of a lot of the AI stuff. Um, in my house, you know, I say something and Alexa chimes in and gives me an answer. So that's pretty cool, but it's also a little spooky. Um, I think our next uh, BA friends, the people sitting next to us in our offices, are going to be robots. You're going to be drinking coffee and they're going to be drinking motor oil or something like that. Um, but I don't think we're there quite yet. Uh, maybe Spark Systems is getting us a little closer, but not quite there yet. Um, and productivity is important. So my goal in life, if you don't know already, my goal in life is to meet everybody in the world. Um, and I think we get paid for, for who we know, not what we know. Um, so if we can find the answers faster, that's better. Um, so if you have a larger network, you're going to be more productive because you're going to get to the answers that we need faster. You're going to get to the right people or you're going to include the right people. Well, productivity comes also with technology. and. Um, if you can have things at your fingertips to make you a better VA, make you a better uh, employee, then why not use them? And technology helps with that. So it's it's my pleasure um, to to be working with Scott. I had the opportunity to to meet him over the last few months and learn a little bit about Spark Systems. But I'm going to. I think uh, do we have Scott? Is he ready to show his screen? Yes, I'm ready to go, so I shall show my screen right now. Okay. So I'll... let me know when you can see it at your end, Coop. I can. So Scott, why don't you take it away? I'll jump in with uh, some questions. I'm also going to be monitoring the, the question window. If things come up that are appropriate for me to bring up uh, throughout the presentation, I will. If not, we'll hold those to the end. But please, 
if you could, before Scott gets started or as he's getting started, if you could find in that question box the in the, the GoToWebinar tool set, there should be a, a question box. If you, everybody could just find that and type something in, say hello to Scott and I and myself, or say hello to me, right? Is it me? Is that the, the proper grammar? Um, to go in and type something in, that'll let me know you guys are hearing us and know where that tool is. All right, so it looks like Tom and Samita and Annette, Robert, James, a whole bunch of people are saying hello. So uh, we are good to go. Fantastic. Well, it's a, uh, a great honor and privilege to be here talking to you today. Uh, as mentioned, my name's Scott Hebbard and I am on the other side of the planet to Coop and our friends at the <laughs> IIBA. So it's nice and bright, and well, it's not even bright now, it's dark and early, uh, but uh, it's uh, lovely to join everyone here today. So in this webinar, I'm really excited because I get to introduce you to the Ultimate BA Toolkit. So a new product called the Spark Systems Tools and Techniques for the BA Body of Knowledge Guide version three. So Spark Systems, together with the International Institute of Business Analysis has released the Spark Systems Tools and Techniques for BA Box Guide version three. So I'll begin the webinar by briefly introducing Spark Systems and Enterprise Architect for anybody out there in the audience that doesn't know about us. Uh, so once I've done that, I'm gonna conduct a comprehensive product demo. So this product is available for free and can be accessed via a public website, which is babok.sparkspublic.com. It requires an access code, which is simply babok.model, all in lowercase. So if you do have your tablet or mobile phone handy, you might want to enter the address and jump on board. Uh, but please, after the session, jump in, experiment for yourself and let us know. So as a BA today, what will you learn? Well, you'll learn about how to apply IIBA best practice. We'll look at Enterprise Architect and hopefully you'll learn how to model, build and create uh, BA artifacts uh, yourself and we'll look at a professional approach to business analysis. So tools and techniques helps you to follow best practice guidelines outlined by the IIBA providing a convenient web-based reference that you can take with you. So it provides real-world practical examples that can be applied to every aspect of your job as a BA. Imagine being able to interact with practical examples that illustrate how to model user stories, maintain requirements, build business rules or interviews and much, much more. Instantly access uh, documentation and help that tells you how to do things and you can view it all on your PC, tablet or mobile device or any web enabled device for that matter. See what types of models you need to complete tasks and it's all gonna be structured around well understood knowledge areas that are found in the body of knowledge which everyone in the audience should be familiar with. So BAs want to be able to solve problems and implement change throughout their organisation. So this tool set shows BAs how to achieve their goals through a robust traceable modelling solution. So that's what I'm really excited about and that's where my expertise lies in Enterprise Architect and creating those robust traceable solutions. So in a perfect world, every BA should have, just like the picture shows on screen, a PC with a copy of Enterprise Architect so that they can create those robust uh, modeling situations. A copy of the uh, BA Body of Knowledge, uh, the four or 500 page book there with lots and lots of reference material. And on a tablet or mobile phone or device, a copy of the tools and techniques for BA Bok Guide version three so that they can step through and see all those samples and uh, example models and see how it gets implemented. So from my perspective, that is what's the, um, the perfect toolkit for a BA. And uh, that's what I'm really hoping to uh, show people today. So a little bit about Enterprise Architects. So Spark Systems specializes in high performance and scalable visual modeling tools for the planning, design and construction of software intensive systems. So Enterprise Architect is used to support BAs on a daily basis. So Spark Systems is a debt-free, privately owned company that has its headquarters based in regional Australia. So, like I said, I'm probably on the other side of the world to most of the audience. Since the official release in 2000, Spark Systems has been committed to support open standards. 
such as your mail, business process modeling, notation, TOGAF name, and UPDM to name just a few. And recently we've been really excited, as you heard in 2015, to have a memorandum of understanding to do some work with the IIBA to develop this great tool set. So uh, Enterprise Architects has a proven track record with over 18 years of continuous development and approximately 750,000 developer hours, that's a lot of hours, committed to developing a world-class product. Enterprise Architect has a small footprint, so in other words, it's nice and small and easy to install. Uh, and it's now at version 13, so Enterprise Architect is a design tool of choice for over 580,000 effective users worldwide. Sparks has 370 partners, some of which I manage, trainers and resellers, including sister companies for localization and support. So we have Spark Systems Japan and a North American uh, services arm. So we have a truly global reach. Enterprise Architect has an extensive feature set, including business process modeling, strategic modeling, systems development, project management, code engineering, database modeling, and much, much more. So visit www.sparksystems.com for more information on any of these features to download 30-day trial. And uh, the access code, I'm going to show it again here. I can see there's a question in the uh, checkbox that says, um, ask Scott to share the URL and the access code. So it's- Thank you, BA. Scott. <laughs> no, no worries, Cooper. I'm glad I can uh, be nice and agile and respond to your needs the minute they come up. So yeah, the, the website's here, so it's babok.sparkspublic.com and the access code is babok.model. And uh, so um, after the presentation- this is, your last, this is your last chance, everybody. After this, you have to pay, uh, you have to pay Spark Systems 50 bucks to get the code. So. No, no, that's not true. We've, we've made it available on our website so you can see it. So I'm going to show you how to log on so it's nice and easy. So once you go to that URL, it automatically pops up and uh, you get to select the model. And uh, there's only one, so that's good. So this is all being delivered by new Pro Cloud Server technology that uh, Spark Systems has developed and we're really, really proud of. So it says authentication, you enter the code, so all in lowercase, babop.model. And uh, so uh, it's uh, nice and easy. You enter the access code and go log in and you have access. So uh, we've uh, now logged in and you can see you've got tools and techniques for BA Bock Guide version three on screen. Now, all I've done is I press F11 to make it go full screen and I find it uh, nice and easy, but you can just view it in your web browser. So this is uh, delivered via WebEA, which has been designed for mobile devices. So everything is designed for clicking like you would on a web page. So it's nice and easy to navigate. It's really, really simple navigation. So you can see a number of columns and a number of different cells, and each of those cells map to something in the BA Bot Guide. So each column represents a knowledge area. So you've got business analysis, planning and monitoring, for example. And as you know, uh, that maps to chapter three of the, the guide. And uh, each cell represents a task. So for example, validate requirements. And I know there's lots of BAs out there that will spend a lot of time validating and verifying requirements. So you might want to click on that to see how you'll implement that task using Enterprise Architect. So what is WebEA? Well, basically all you're looking at is an enterprise architect model and it's being delivered via ProCloud services and WebEA just serves it up. Now we've had lots of interest and it allows you to browse enterprise architect models <coughs> via a mobile device. So we're really uh, proud and excited about this technology, but what it means for BAs out there is you've got a nice simple web-based tool that you can open up in a, a browser uh, or on a mobile device or a tablet such as the one shown on screen and it allows you to find out information. So I'm just going to pause ever so briefly. So I've shown you the URL, I've given you a bit of background about Spark Systems and Enterprise Architect. So I'm just going to pause briefly and see if there's uh, any questions or comments before I dive into the tool and uh, have a look at some of the specific features. So, did you have any uh, comments, Coop, or uh, did you have anything that you might like to mention about 
what it's how valuable it is for a BA to be able to have a, a tool set for having a centralized repository for being able to access all of your requirements and uh, assets that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, I think the the, the value of, of this tool just that that's out there open to the to the public is that it's it's there it's an easy way if you if you do follow the guide and need some reminder of some of the things uh, in the BA box you can quickly get to it um, and also see some of the the models that that can be built there were um, there was a question this is more for the IIBA I think from um, Stephen Ferguson about will the BA Bach EA model be a standard release of EA models? So I'm, I'm not sure about standards, um, but maybe uh, uh, Deb or someone from the IIBA can to to hit on this. Um, I think overall everybody's kind of um, can see kind of the value just in this, even though you're going to get into more of the meat once you get into actually combining. Spark Systems or Enterprise Architect and the VA Bach and show how it kind of all connects. Yeah, and in the presentation, first I show the the tools and techniques and I show how to navigate that. And I try to tie it up in the end by using Enterprise Architect to quickly build a full enterprise model that uses some of the examples uh, that are shown throughout the uh, demonstration today. So hopefully, uh, by the end of the session, everybody has an aha moment and goes, oh, that's fantastic. I can see how I can use that in my organisation to get modelling quicker and to make my life easier as a BA, which is ultimately what we're hoping to achieve. Okay. Yeah, well, so Sean, Sean just asked, like, is this just the web based or can it be used inside the EA Business Edition client? I think that's, that's yeah, where it, you know, it that's absolutely where right. Yeah, it absolutely can be used within Enterprise Architect. And part of the demonstration later, I will show the model uh, within Enterprise Architect. And we have what's called an MDG technology. And I don't want to make life confusing, but basically you download an installer, you run it, and all of the sample models are then available within Enterprise Architect for you to use. So we've tried to make it available for free for everybody out there that's a BA. But if you do have Enterprise Architect, which we'd obviously recommend, uh, it, you get that added advantage of being able to uh, install and implement and use those models uh, in your own organisation and adapt them to your own personal needs. So um, I might get started. Do you think that uh, covers his question, Coop? Yeah, yeah, I think we're good. I think a lot of the questions coming in relate to what you're getting to. So. So um, yes. so, I'll let you see if you hit on those before we address them. No worries, that's great. Okay, so uh, the graphic on screen shows, you know, here's the, the BA body of knowledge and here's a book. And as I said, each of the sections represents you know, a chapter in the book. So here's chapter three. So you've got plan business analysis approach and you've got a purpose and a description, inputs and needs and... Uh, you know, elements and a number of different approaches. So I'm just showing this briefly to sort of show how this information maps to what's in the tools and techniques. So you can see chapter three is there and you've got business analysis, planning and monitoring. So if I click on 3.1, you can see in the blue box at the top of the screen are a number of different techniques. Whenever I click on the element, such as plan business analysis approach, you can see the purposes listed and described here. Now, because this is basically an enterprise architect model on the right of screen, you have properties and locations and relationships. But you have lots of techniques listed up the top. And for each of these, uh, you also have your inputs, your outputs, your BA BOC elements, your BA BOC guidelines and tools, and all of your stakeholders. So all of these are mapped in this visual environment in WebEA and you can click on them and find out more information. Now the ultimate toolkit will have your guide there so you can get more detail but you can navigate. So for example functional decomposition. So I can click and see a business rule so this is a business process modeling diagram and I can get an example. Under learn more 
you can see I can learn more about functional decomposition and it will show me you know how to use you know uh, a process modeling diagram for example with lots and lots of links to help files so that if I've never done it before I can go to the website and I can find out more information so this is the structure it, it the text in orange up the top represents uh, the description and you have links to to help files and to uh, real-world example links. Now, not only do you have diagrams, but on screen you have uh, a state analysis interview. So in Enterprise Architect, not only can you have these visual elements, but you can have you know, a Word document or an RTF or a PDF document in your model. So you can have detailed, comprehensive um, documents embedded in your model. You can see that there are a number of properties listed on the right hand side. So for every model artifact, you can see who the author is, when it was created, what type of artifact it is, the version, phase, status, and good. And uh, while in other models, this is really quite important, it's great that all of this information is available via the web, via this convenient web-based format. So um, under interviews, you can see there are a number of modeling options and uh, there are also options to uh, find out information. So if you don't know how to embed an, uh, a document in Enterprise Architect, you can click on the link that says Create Document Artifact and it will step you through step by step exactly how you do this in Enterprise Architect. So if someone's sitting there going, oh, there's just no way I'll I would know how to you know, create a document or create a requirements diagram or create a, a use case or a user story. Well, every single resource and technique has a step-by-step -step guide that steps you through the process about how to create it. And it will give you examples and it will give you a description and links to the help file all embedded within tools and techniques. If I look at the structure here, you can see this is an interview and there are four modeling options. So you can create an interview uh, plan directly in Enterprise Architect using uh, the document element. You can create an artifact uh, representing the interview plan and hyperlink to it. You can enter the interviews using the project calendar. You can create model mail messages. So those modeling options talk about how to you know, create artifacts, how to do project management, and how to embed that all within Enterprise Architect. So it's really quite powerful that this is just one technique in one section of the BABOC guide, but we've got hundreds of them listed throughout this tool. And uh, it's designed to be on a tablet so you can quickly view it. Now in the top right hand corner you'll see that there are a number of na navigation elements. Um, able to quickly jump back to the uh, home page um, and I can look at uh, different elements. Now I've probably gone that uh, through that at you know 100 miles per hour and very quick but what I wanted to show you very very quickly is that for each uh, um, knowledge area within the BA body of knowledge you have lots of techniques, you have lots of links to help, you have lots of sample models and lots of modeling options to help get you started. So if you're the kind of BA that uh, often will do things with spreadsheets uh, and uh, Word documents spread out over the network and it's difficult to find things, well this will help give you a nice formal, structured, professional approach to get it all in a centralized repository so that you can search it, you can find it, you have traceability, you can link it to other documents and to other elements and uh, get started creating a modeling environment. If you don't have EA, you can just look at how you might be able to apply and implement some of these um, areas of interest. But obviously the ultimate BA toolkit as shown on screen will consist of the guide itself, the tools and techniques on a tablet and Enterprise Architect sitting on a PC. So now that I've drilled down just into a couple of topics, I might just pause briefly once again and um, hand over to Coop and see whether that's uh, raised some interest in the audience and uh, whether we have uh, any more questions. No, the, the audience is, they're, uh, 
they're all leaving. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the I think there is interest, and I think the you know you just hit on it at the uh, the end of kind of wrapping up this section around you know even if you're not uh, Sparks an EA user that there's still good examples, right? So I mean a lot of this yeah. stuff, and a lot of us grew up, you know, a lot of us grew up in a in a world where we didn't have any tools and techniques, you know, it was pen and paper and then Microsoft and, and many of us still use Microsoft Word uh, and Excel and that kind of stuff. So still those examples kind of give give you some guidance. Um, one of the things that uh, was kind of brought up and I wanted to talk about were the examples. So Tom asked, are the, the Sparks example techniques the stock examples? Um, and stock in quotes, uh, or were they built specifically for the IIBA? So we built some examples that are specific for the IIBA. Uh, we've always had an EA example model with lots and lots of rich examples with everything from business processes to organisational charts uh, right throughout. However, we built a lot of these models so that they're specifically tailored for individual elements or knowledge areas within the, uh, the body of knowledge. And we've organised them and sorted them so they're all based on knowledge areas. And in a few moments I'm going to switch to another screen which will um, is another colour, it's a blue colour, and it breaks all of the uh, example models up into the type of tasks that a BA might do. So it, it's a different way of searching and for example if you want to do business rules or something like that then you can just quickly jump to that and uh, and have a look at some sample models. So yeah we'll talk about that um, but like all presentations I need to present everything uh, pretty much straight away and uh, so I'm just trying to drip feed everyone out there so that you, uh, you can't wait to uh, get on the website and try it out for yourself. Right, yeah, so it, you know, there are a lot of questions, I will say, just for the audience sake, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get to, there's a ton of questions coming in. Some are related specifically to um, the tool itself, and uh, like one question was, can Spark CA link to documents held within document tools like OpenDocs from Kevin? Um, there was another one about how you can actually change the, the web view. Um, I think those are going to be best to be answered potentially either if we have time at the end maybe you can hit on those but uh, best answered uh, maybe via via email I know when I've done other IIBA webinars I, I answered questions post webinar and I think those are good ones for potentially post webinar but there are questions around lean techniques and agile um, and supporting an agile approach so as you you know continue Scott maybe that could be kind of weaved into your uh, to your presentation. Yeah, no, no, certainly. And I know um, as far as document management is concerned, I think, you know, our goal would be that all the documents are just stored in the central repository, as you've seen, and then they can be searched and opened and everyone can view it and everyone's looking at the same source of truth. So we probably wouldn't recommend a third-party tool. We'd have it all in Enterprise Architect, but um, yeah, you know, part of this is a learning experience, so people can see what Enterprise Architect can do. So uh, it's it's great, and uh, yeah, we'll try and make some space available on our website where we can perhaps answer some of those questions. So uh, we've had a look at uh, tools and techniques, and so what I'd like to do is just drill down into another topic. So this is verify requirements, and I think many uh, BAs will spend a lot of time. No, looking at requirements. So uh, we've got here acceptance and evaluation criteria. So here is a sample model where you have a number of different requirements. So you have 168 requirement, uh, 164, 169. One of the great things about this is that for every requirement you've got a, um, a requirements verification. So you can specify if every requirement in your organisation has to follow you know, a set of verification requirements, you can list them here. So it needs to be atomic, complete, concise, feasible, um, unambiguous. Now if your organisation has other uh, techniques that are required in order to verify each requirement, then you can just simply update that list. So uh, 
you know, Enterprise Architect is great at managing requirements and if I drill down into that requirement, you can see all the tagged values are listed here on the right hand side. So you've got you know, data description, operation description, priority, report description and requirement number 164, well, if I drill down into that, it's made up of three separate requirements. So uh, you have traceability, you have verification and I can have a look at this checklist and once again on the right hand side if I looked at the tagged values the checklist items are listed and they're visible here. So within Enterprise Architect you can build all of this in so that you can build better requirements, you can solve problems and document them in requirements and do a better job and be able to manage those requirements quite well. So um, before I was looking at interviews and this time I'm looking at you know, requirements and, and how you might be able to model those within Enterprise Architect, be able to, you know, use a simple checklist for verification purposes and then uh, not only that but have, you know, nice uh, robust structures. You can see I've also got on screen a relationship matrix so that you can identify any gaps in your requirement solution. You can also create a requirements diagram and uh, have those realised by use cases and link them to business processes or business rules. So you've got a lot of depth and structure there for modelling in EA. And uh, like Coop said, there's some great examples there just to see how you might do things. Uh, once again, we can have a look at uh, the inputs for requirements and the outputs and some of the BABOC elements such as uh, the verification activities. So it's really, really easy and you just have some nice, uh, simple click-throughs that you can select and uh, check items. Now, uh, in addition to uh, doing all of this, we can look at something else such as define future state. So you can see if you look at the techniques for future states, you've got business cases. Once again, you've got a number of modeling options, and uh, those modeling options are listed here. So you can create a business case directly in Enterprise Architect, you can create artifacts, you can create documents. And once again, you can click through and you can see you know, examples and you can learn more. So I suppose I'm just showing different aspects of the tool to illustrate how easy it is to click through, to find out more information, to get modeling options, to see sample, um, and um, prototypes, I did a webinar on prototyping a while ago and I really love the fact that you can create a prototype for an Android phone or a mobile phone or a Win32 application and model it all in Enterprise Architect and link those prototypes through to requirements to create better applications. Uh, you can also do a SWOT analysis, so here's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats all modelled in a visual tool and uh, they can link to documents as well. So you've got lots of breadth and, you know, to be honest, there's hours and hours of webinars that um, I could potentially do a webinar on each of these topics and take you through how you might be able to apply them as a BA. But I wanted to give you a sense of the breadth and the sense of uh, the sheer amount of information that's available to you uh, freely that you can access and gain um, quick access to. Uh, you can see that there's a, a structure there and you can navigate based on uh, the historical elements that you've linked and you can always come back to the, the home page. So um, the next thing I want to do is look at this other diagram. Now one thing I'll say is that the word modelling has two L's in here and before some of the audience say, oh you've spelled it wrong, we um, uh, when this was developed uh, we didn't use US spelling um, for some things and uh, we often will use uh, US based spelling uh, for our website. So um, these are some things that, are, that might come up. Um, but here, like I mentioned, you've got a, um, a, a different structure where Everything's broken up into the type of tasks that you might do, such as strategy and planning or elicitation and collaboration. And here I can click on interviews and I can see here's a, a current state analysis interview that's linked to customers. 
or I could look at business requirements and I could see a number of business requirements listed on screen or I could look at a, a current state analysis and see a SWOT analysis. So if you like, um, and here we've got mind maps. Now I like mind maps because I think they're just a great way of being able to uh, throw out some ideas and link some rough ideas in some of the conceptual or some of the early stages of planning and design work in order to bring together those ideas. Now, these ideas can form the basis of what might be requirements or you know product deployments or or how you're going to apply business rules. But I think um, using a mind map like this is really a great way of being able to you know, get some of that information across nice and quickly and easily. So I think Coop mentioned before, and where are some of the examples? So if you like, you can just look at examples um, and some sample models uh, using this particular diagram. So now we've got a, um, a, you know, a business process or you know, risk analysis. So you can see every single time I click on this interface, there's a, you know, <laughs> probably, you know, either hours of, of training or hours of fun, depending, uh, you know, uh, how you look at things, Coop. But, uh, you know, there's just so much rich detail that shows you how you might go away and, um, you know, model risks or model business processes or model your requirements. And uh, even if you, you know, aren't using Enterprise Architect, you can learn a lot from this about how to create a more formal, professional, structured, uh, even you know, agile, um, well-developed approach to try and uh, model how you do your day-to-day -day business, how you document it, how you record it, and um, be able to take that to the next level. Now, obviously, as a Sparks employee, I'd be happy if everyone went out and got Enterprise Architect to you know, make them um, you know, more professional and structured. And um, But you can see we've really teamed up with the IIBA to create a, a tool set that can really help people get started. So <clears throat> now you'll see that the screen's changed. And what I've done is now I've opened the exact same model up in Enterprise Architect. So everything yeah. we've looked at so far yeah, has been yeah. free. Yeah, can I, yeah. let me just jump in, because yes. I think there's a lot of questions about using the tool, and someone asked about, we have EA version 10, can I download the application into my web? Uh, uh, in, yeah, can I download the application into my laptop, and is this available in the tool? So I'm glad you're you're hitting on this. Yes. So hopefully everybody is going to start to see now actually how how this all integrates with the tool. So if you are... Uh, an EA user today, you're going to see how na how it navigates in. So the the, yes. the first half was more about um, free, well, open free. to the public. Yes, and free, um, open to the public. Yes, right. And now this is kind of how it's done. There was one question. They said the um, this diagram that you have up has columns three through eight. Where's one and two? Um, I don't read the BA Bach every day, but uh, I believe these are the the chapters in uh, in are. the BA Bach, right, uh, for these knowledge areas. So one and two is like one is the introduction. I forgot what, what two might be. Maybe it's the, the core concept model. Um, yeah. But so so these are the key things that um, Spark Systems and or EA is going to have within it. There is nothing really in the introduction that makes sense to be integrated within the tool. So that's why no, it doesn't. they did that. And and if you really want those introductory chapters, then you go out and buy the BA Bot Guide and you can read them and that will introduce all of these key concepts. But we've focused on the things that you you can model, you can build and you can design and construct within Enterprise Architect. So Right. Hey yeah. I, I do want to give you a shout out um a Shima uh I think that's how you pronounce the name. I apologize if it's wrong, but they said this is uh, useful and interesting um, for reading. He was trying to read the PDF version and was getting a little bored. Yeah, you know, actually, the for me, and I apologize to all the the writers of the BA Bach, but it's good uh, when I'm ready to go to sleep, I can read parts of the Bach. Um, but, you know, he felt uh, or she felt that there was more interest um, 
you know, and easier to kind of bounce around. Now, if you need a lot of the details, though, you still need to go back to the PDF version or the book version. But this this kind of gives you a really good overview and insight into um, different things within the BA Bot Guide. Yeah, and I think they both they both feed off one another and right. and help support one another. So it's it's great. So yeah, so everything that we've um, we've looked at so far has been free and you can just go to the website and you can access it and that's great. Now, obviously part of the power is being able to view the model and being able to do some of these things in Enterprise Architect. So now the second half of the presentation is going to transition towards you know, being able to do some of these things within Enterprise Architect. So you can view your sample models and you can view all of these diagrams within Enterprise Architect. Now this is Enterprise Architect 13. I, uh, Coop said one of the questions was about um, version 10. Uh, this is all based on a, uh, a new um, product called ProCloud Server which is being introduced with uh, Enterprise Architect 13. So we'd encourage you to get the, the uh, latest version of Enterprise Architect so that you can make the most of uh, all of these features. So on the left hand side you have a project browser which is how you navigate uh, items. So for example I can quickly uh, do a search and I uh, can do a search for plan business analysis governance and I can bring up uh, that particular diagram. And all of these are just simply diagrams within Enterprise Architect. Now if I open any of these items you'll see um, the information that was displayed on the web page all it is is the notes field for a um, for an element within Enterprise Architect. So uh, Web EA, all it's really doing is taking this powerful, wonderful Enterprise Architect model that we've created and making it available um, via the web. Uh, once again, I can just do Control Click to you know open up a, a sample document. And so you can see once again, Enterprise Architect allows you to access documents in a central repository and uh, with one or two clicks be able to find them. You can search the model and uh, you can do lots of different things uh, with the model. If I have a look at goals and objectives, one of the great things about Enterprise Architect is it allows you to adapt and reuse these example models and use them in your own organisation. So for example, here we have a goal and one of the things that many um, BAs need to do is they need traceability. So if I change this, what's it going to wreck in the future? So I can bring up a traceability window and I can see that this particular goal, well it's realised by a um, uh, CRM hosted service. And that CRM hosted service implements all of these requirements from 153 to 156 and there's a whole lot of goals. And, and those goals are, are then realised by a, you know, um, a capture um, CRM hosted service and I can bring up the properties for that element. So you have traceability, you have um, a great deal of features within Enterprise Architect that takes these requirements that you know it can be lost in a person's drawer if they're in a Word document and you print them out but here they're all in a centralised repository and you can find elements instantly. So for example we've got a diagram and what I might use is I might use diagram filters so that I can find exactly what I want. So here I've got a couple of diagram filters so I'm going to find all elements on screen that show historical orders. Or I might find anything that has a tagged value where the urgency is high. So even though these are fairly, um, you know, fairly simple um, examples with only a few elements on screen, you can imagine the power and flexibility. If you had a thousand elements all modelled within your organisation and you think, oh, I really need anything that was authored by Scott Hevard because, you know, he's made some mistakes and we've got to check up on those elements or, you know, I really need to find any element that's, you know, got urgency set to high because if they're not done today, we're not going to meet our deadline. So using Enterprise Architect you can do this with a few simple diagram filters and a few search capabilities. And I feel bad because I can't show you know, all of the power and all of the flexibility, but I just wanted to show a few simple examples with some diagram filters and some searching in the project browser and a few other things to show traceability, to show robust models, the ability 
ability to find things and to be able to link them together. And that's all available within Enterprise Architect. So um, the next part I'm going to go through and show you how you can adapt and reuse uh, your models. But I'll just pause briefly there and see if there's any uh, follow-ups or, or questions on what I've shown there, Coop. Well, I think the there seem to be a few questions around integration with other systems. Like uh, they're asking, someone was asking about TFS, Microsoft Team Foundation Server. Um, there were other questions. I think there were a few questions about TFS. Um, yes. So others we do support about Jira and other systems. So I don't know if there's if you can rattle off a list or. So uh, we do support uh, TFS and we do uh, support the ability to take uh, our content um, and support you know, other tools via XMI import and export. So we do support lots of other tools. Uh, obviously with my Sparks hat on I'd say well you might not need all the other tools. You can have it within Enterprise Architect but we do we um we play well with others and we we share and um, yeah. we find that if we export things out to XMI so people could use TFS or DAWs then eventually they end up migrating everything to Enterprise Architect and uh, using it within Enterprise Architect. So we uh, do offer a lot of that integration and of course within Enterprise Architect you can do lots of code development so you can write C and Java and. Uh, C++ and so it's an integrated development environment and it supports a lot of those standards that I mentioned before such as uh, YOML and TOGAF and UPDM and uh, lots of different architectural frameworks. So uh, yeah, it's probably difficult to comprehensively answer all of the integration questions but if you go to sparksystems.com uh, you can uh, have a look and do a search and you'll you'll find that we do integrate with TFS and um, doors and um, and uh, you know Visual Studio and a range of different uh, tools like that so right so if you... oh go ahead I was just going to say hopefully that kind of gives you a, a a bit of a brief overview about some of the the integration that we have and um, how you can pull some of those different um, third-party tools and bring it into EA and uh, export it to, to other tools Right. So there are there's a number of questions. Of it. it seems like there are a number of uh, EA users out there on the line today. So there seems to be questions relating to like the use of the tool. What's the? I know you can't hit on all that today. We have about 13 minutes left. But what's what's the best way for them to get uh, their questions answered? And also, there it seemed to be there's different versions of the tool. Obviously, so someone was talking about EA 12.1. There was yes. EA version 10. Are all these, is this model, the BA Bach integration, is that available for all of them or just at certain versions? Uh, yeah, so it's going to work best with Enterprise Architect 13. Uh, an MDG technology is going to be made available so you can download it for free and Enterprise Architect users can get access to um, to all of these elements. So, um, uh, yes. Uh, using the latest version of the product um, makes means that everything will work out of the box. Um, right. uh, so uh, that's probably the best and safest approach because it's uh, really just been developed quite recently. Uh, this is a beta release; it's just come out. So, uh, so many of the the tools and techniques will use features that are available in uh, uh, Enterprise Architect 13, and uh, the new Pro Cloud server is a uh, um, also just um, in the process of being released. So uh, to take advantage of that, if you, you know, buy today, uh, you've got the latest and greatest version of Enterprise Architect. So, um, but we will be running more webinars uh, via the Spark Systems website as well, and uh, we'll be able to answer some of these questions and, um, and publish them online and, um, and be able to respond to them. So hopefully we might be able to get a copy of some of these yeah. technical questions and respond offline and make them available on the Spark Systems website. Yeah, so. That'll be great. And James Beck will thank you for that. He just asked. <laughs> <that>. so, <yeah. laughs> Very good. 
Now, I, I think I'm uh, suffering from uh, the uh, usual problem that I'm talking too much because I'm too excited and uh, <laughs> rather than getting through content. So on screen you have our MDG technology and um, so this allows you to install um, the product. We're going to make it available via the website and uh, you know, once you have it available you can, as you can see, just click next, 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 next and OK and it's done. So that's how quick and easy it is. You know, um, 20 seconds and you're up and running. Uh, so if you have Enterprise Architect, uh, you can then uh, switch to Enterprise Architect and um, <clears throat> you can see I'm using version 13, which uh, I think some of the questions have come up about that. I'm going to create a new project, so I'm just going to call it Babok Introduction. And uh, once I've created that new project, I can use a model pattern. So the model pattern's on screen. So you can see that now that I've done that installation, there is a Babok standard framework, there's a Babok technique patterns and Babok standard documents that you can automatically use. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use an entire standard framework and I'm going to select enterprise. I'm going to customize the pattern so I can click which items I want and don't want. So let's say I don't want standards and references and you know, I, I don't want the value chain. So I can go and pick and choose and see which things I want and which things I don't want using this <coughs> customized pattern. And I import it and now all of that enterprise level stuff is available here within the project browser. So you can see under business uh, we've got an org chart. So I'm just going to um, put the project browser on the left of the screen. So, like everything, you want to tailor it to your own needs. So, uh, here at our organisation, Jeff Sparks is the CEO, so I can update that and I can uh, put our, our COO uh, in as well. And I can make a few changes to the org chart and customise it so it's tailored towards my organisation. And I'll put the head of software development in. And uh, so, there you go, I've, I've developed an org chart in, what, 10 seconds? Um, so, a uh, stakeholder list. So, what are some of the stakeholders that we might deal with? Well, you know, we might deal with, um, you know, insurance companies. We might deal with, uh, um, you know, uh, not-for-profits or NGOs. Um, we might deal with, uh, you know, with government organisations. So, we can quickly go through... And, and you can see I've used a pattern, I've pulled that pattern in and I've been able to uh, modify that pattern and template in just a few seconds uh, to add stakeholders and uh, to, to build up this enterprise level model. Now this is all you know, business functions such as organisation and stakeholders but there's capabilities and business rules some business processes and requirements that you can use a template to get started and it's all going to be there sitting available for you just in a few seconds. So it's really um, really quite powerful. And, you know, here you've got a stakeholder matrix. So um, you can see how some of these things might be um, applicable to a nice agile approach. Um, you, you have Kanban diagrams and a number of other activities so that you can um, you know, apply it to um, to uh, you know, an agile methodology. We don't specify which methodology you use, but we make it nice and easy to support different methodologies. So here you can you know, update business rules, and um, yeah. So one business rule for me would be to make webinars simple and make lots of them. So uh, I'm pretty certain we'll get to the end of this webinar, and people will want to know more, and I'll <laughs> need to do uh, a bit more work. You can see there's some examples here for you know, business process modelling and uh, uh, a range of different tools and activities uh, that have all been built uh, using this simple uh, pattern to pull in some of the examples. Now once again I can bring up the tools and techniques on my tablet to have a look at a business process diagram or a stakeholder matrix and I can see links to help to see how it works and, um, and bring all of that together. So um, what I've tried to do today, and it's really hard to show the, the power and flexibility of Enterprise Architect in such a short period of time, but the goal of today was to try and introduce people to tools and techniques for the BA Body of Knowledge Guide version 3. It's a, a strategic alliance between the IIBA and uh, Spark Systems, 
Uh, it's deployed uh, in Enterprise Architect, so you can view it in Enterprise Architect, or you can use Web EA to view it on a tablet, on a mobile device, or via the web uh, in a nice, simple, convenient format. Uh, it allows you to pick up um, your tablet and to, to look at the tools and techniques for the BA body of knowledge, to be able to uh, interact with it, to drill down into each of the topics, to see modelling options that might be, um, you know, valid for verifying requirements or, you know, um, planning a business analysis approach. Uh, this is available for free on a PC, laptop, phone or tablet and it's available at babok.sparkspublic.com and uh, that access code is simply, uh, you know, babok.model all in lowercase. So it's all available for free on any web enabled device and it can uh, allow you to take it with you. Um, our, you know, our proposition is the ultimate BA toolkit. You have the entire body of knowledge guide sitting there, the 500 pages, you have tools and techniques for the BA BOC on a, a tablet or phone and you have a PC running Enterprise Architect. As I mentioned, this is all delivered using the new Pro Cloud Server technology from Spark Systems, and we're really proud of that. And uh, you know, long term, lots of enterprise architect models will be able to be delivered via the uh, Pro Cloud Server. So, um, you know, keep in touch and uh, go to SparkSystems.com/webinars to to learn more about that. But that is the end of my formal presentation. I'm just going to ever so briefly uh, bring up a web page. So here's a, a live version of um, the document. So you can see I can just click through and I can find my techniques. So you can see it's babok.sparkspublic.com. Um, if you go to sparksystems.com and just go bo, um, so type babok, then it redirects to this page. So here you've got uh, information, uh, links about the different topics. Um, you can uh, see, you can launch it. And if you're the kind of person that's terrible at remembering access codes, well, it's listed here. So you can just click the button and it'll automatically launch a page and tell you what the access code is if you happen to uh, forget. There's information about the Pro Cloud Server and uh, lots of great things like that. And uh, you know, eventually we'll make uh, this demonstration available um, online. We'll probably host a video up here so that if you want to re-watch this and uh, learn more, you can. Now, um, the other thing that I uh, always like to show is uh, if you want to learn more under resources, or you can just say sparksystems.com slash webinars, you can go here to our library of webinars and we have um, there's my uh, bright shiny face, but there are you know lots and lots and hundreds of hours of free webinars that you can go and learn more about you know uh, use case analysis or requirements management in Enterprise Architect 13. So there's lots of tools and resources there. Uh, now I'm quite happy to uh, stay on the line a bit longer for questions, but I know I have probably talked too much, so I'll hand over to Coop and uh, thank you very much uh, for um, listening and uh, for being so uh, engaged and uh, having uh, so many questions. So uh, hand over to you, Coop, and uh, uh, fire them at me. <laughs> All right, so we have about two minutes. So um, the good thing is there are a lot of questions. I guess the downside for you is you have a lot to, to go through and try to answer um, for the attendees. Um, one of the questions I wanted to, to bring up right now was when you were showing the frameworks, uh, one of the questions from Jules was, can you create your own standard frameworks that can be used to start new projects, or is it just oh. the ones that are built in there? Absolutely, you can go and... Uh create your own framework, adapt it to your own needs, and then just copy and paste. And every time you have a new project, you can take that core set that doesn't change for every project, and you can just copy the package and paste it into a new one, and you've saved months of work. So one of the great things about Enterprise Architect is that you can, you know, you can copy and paste a package, and, you know, we support 
um, element and framework reuse and uh, uh, it makes life easier and saves time as a BA. So uh, yes, you can certainly do that. And uh, not only can you copy and paste, but you can export the entire package as a, an XMI file and you can distribute it via um, a number of different mechanisms so that it can be readily available to anyone in the organisation. So yes, I wanted to show how quick and easy it was to tailor it, but you can tailor it, customise it and redistribute it to save time. All right. Awesome. Well, <clears throat> we got about 30 seconds left. Ed. Thank you, Scott, for for showing the tool. There was definitely interest. There were a lot of um, EA users on the line, so I know they have questions for you. So if you have questions about the the integration with the BA bot guide, go to sparksystems.com. You can find a lot of information there. Um, and you can go to the IIBA and get information there. But I think overall, I think it's a great uh, partnership between two organizations to help BAs be more productive. So if you are a, an EA user already, that's great. Um, now you have the integration. Hopefully some people are more interested and can look into to using the tool. So I'm going to hand it back to Deb because we're right at the top of the hour uh, to close this up. Thank you everybody for listening in and have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are. <laughs> Thank you very much, both Scott and, and Coop. That was an amazing presentation. And, and yes, Scott, you've, you've left people wanting more. Tons of questions, as Coop was saying. And, um, and we will spend some time getting those together. And, and we will work with, uh, with Scott to get those, those answered. But I just really want to thank Coop for your great job, as always, in terms of uh, getting everyone engaged and, and, and getting all those questions out of people. So thank you very, very much for, for your time with us as well. And, and again, Scott, thank you very, very much for introducing an amazing tool that I think will be something that uh, people will enjoy for, for a very long time. So with that, I will say uh, we'll end the webinar. And uh, please do join us for our next uh, set of webinars. Just look on our website and see what's in store for the month of April. Okay, take care everyone. Bye for now.